Hello, Vera Franco. Hello, Julia Neumann. Finally, I get to hear you. I'm glad you said yes, because I want to hear your legends and what's alive in you about the women of Earth Lab that you organized and originated, originated with together with Anne-Chloe Destremont. And we've heard a few women speak already about it and and your voice has been missing for me. Will you say something about what's what's yeah, what was the women of Earth Lab for you? The women of Earth Lab is was the most revolutionary lab that I've been a part of creating it, to help deliver, co-delivering it, but also being a part of it, like, uh, participating in, in the sense that, you know, particularly with, with women, what I've noticed is that there's this, um, there's a, a lot of, there's just so many stories about what is a woman, what is femininity, and, and usually there's stories that are mm, very limiting to woman, woman's power, woman's um, capacity. And it even it even started as when when Aunt Chloe and I were making the world know, <clears throat> making the world know that we were doing this women of Earth Lab and other women were doing another women uh, women's lab, uh, wanting to collaborate. And the definition of collaboration can be so different in different levels of responsibility and context. And for me, this and, and for Anne Chloe, I think the what made it really incredibly revolutionary is that in the Women of Earth Lab, collaboration is is being so fierce with each other and oneself from pulling the rug from under myself pulling the rug from under a sister so that realness so that honesty can happen and so no kind of hi i'm no niceties you know not not that people cannot be cordial or kind to each other um, but it's mostly that in women's, uh, in, in modern culture, women, are, kindness has been used for the purpose of survival. Women's kindness has been used for the purple of keeping peace. And so the women's lab is not about kindness. It's not that they were not kind. It's that it's radical kindness, such kindness, such love, such fierce love that we will not let something slip between us and so this was this just for like a legend in usually in um both gendered just common both genders labs at the last day there's usually a couple of people that in the last um i don't say circle they they start going i need a person i would like to have someone on my team for this project or i'm going to start a a 333 initiation space for rage who's going to be there or i'm going to write this article by this date and so who's on my team for accountability and there's usually a couple of different people but it's you know three four five people in the last day of the women's lab we uh, and Chloe and I had plans to have these ideas, so like we could do this process and this process. But for a whole hour, a little bit over an hour, women, the 27 women were hiring each other for creation. It wasn't just one person going like, who's on my team for this? Who's on my team for that? And that was it. It was one full hour of women saying, I'm doing this. Who's on my team? I'm doing this. Who's on my team? And, and I'm, I'm actually, actually, I didn't say, I don't know why I didn't say it to anybody, but I'm offering this workshop and I'm no longer like hiding it from you. And, and then other women were like, oh my God, I totally forgot. I'm also doing a workshop and I'm also doing this. And, and I hadn't even thought about using Rage Club um, or, or possibility management to do that workshop and who's on my team to figure out how it's going to go. And it was just so natural 
the collaboration for creation it was so natural collaboration for hiring each other to um just to I, I could just the image that I got is this cornucopia this horn of plenty of of things that could of of uh, experiences of workshops of creations of of bridges that were just naturally happening growing and growing and growing and multiplying with each other's uh with each other's creation and I know that by the end of of that lab I'm I'm in like five different groups with the same kind of six women and but each one exploring a, a facet of what is an archaearchal woman, what is a woman of earth, what is a woman that holds space for archaearchy. And that's something I've never seen in men. Yeah, you know, it's it's I I remember being in Colorado last year in a in an ETB that was three days ETB and two days of community like deepening and tourist technology. And it was men and women kind of basically the same more or less the same number, a little bit more than men than women. And and the men wanted to explore things like uh, budgets and money. And, and, and they were very much into this um, intellectual conversation and, and trying to solve something. And the women, and, and, and they were really coming into the, the session. They would come into the session, they learn something, and then they go into the break and they, they go go they go have a break a lot of the times would be gremlin feeding but the women the women could not wait for another moment to do an, an, another emotional healing process in every single break they would come to each other or to me and say can you say more about this thing that you said can we do a practice about that can you you know even during this break i've already have two women who are interested in that they wanted to work they really wanted to work and so at some point there was this low drama thing happening with one of the men who was being in a victim state about, about money, about money to even pay for the training. And, and people were giving him possibilities and it was shutting all the possibilities down. And, and I had a co-partner, um, a, a pr trainer partner. And I just said to my male co-partner, I said, you handle this. Me and the women are going to do some work. Because they have, I need to honor that they have been every single break, morning, breakfast, lunch, you know, every single break going practicing. And so this is this, it's such a, com a completely different experience working with women than working with men. Is, I've got a question there about, is this what you mean also, or, or if, like that women have done maybe the, the the work for lack of a better word or the transformation enough that they're actually at that stage and may not simply somewhere else or or is that how do you how do you explain that or what is your hint about that i i think re women really want transformation to happen and they are willing to go through it i mean it, this was also really interesting in the women of earth lab where if if and chloe and i would not have so many different processes invented they would be if, if it was up to just the women in on that lab they would be doing ehps in the morning afternoon in the evening and even asking some women in the lunch breaks for some from emotional healing processes they want it and it's not and it wasn't because of an addiction i'm not okay i need to have it it was there's something going on let's handle it Let's not wait until tomorrow. Let's not wait to plan it. Let's handle it right now. Let's get this out of the way so that something else can happen. And I think women naturally are managers. They are handlers. They are creators. And, and so it just it's something that happens very naturally, just the way, same way that a woman in modern culture is usually the manager of the family and usually the manager of the time and the schedules and these things. It's just very uh natural to to take care to to steward to steward spaces with the time and energy and resource that they have but given complete freedom into healing and transformation women are just they will not let go of the bone 
And, and I love that. I really love that. Yeah. And they're still doing it. They're still in so many different groups creating and seeing what's the next thing and how can I get empowered and what's my next experiment. Whereas I see it, the men, they have uh, their own, their own path and they, it seems to be that it's, it's something else. And, and it, women are at the, at the verge of creating. They really, it's like, they've been holding on this all this energy that has been for survival, for making sure that they have a little bit of creation here, make sure they have a bit of freedom there, make sure that they have a little bit of self-care, of, of um, taking care of their seed or their garden or their, their project, but always kind of carving space out of, the, out of the, all the roles that they play in, in modern culture. And if you take that out, this little thing they've been creating just can explode. And so that's why I think is women, I've been waiting to explode into creation and space holding for years. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. How, now how did you pop, like, did you have to do to pop the cork? Is that what happened in the Women of Earth Lab or was that already active in them? No popping the cord needed for creation to happen for women. It is, that was the thing that I found very different than for men. It was that with men, it would be like, do you know that there's this possibility? You could do this. You can ask someone. You can, but women started creating archaearchy. You know, this whole hiring each other is already creating archaearchy. Fierce women asking other dangerous women to do this. You know, they were really hiring each other. And it wasn't just my little friend over here. And I, I'm just going to. I'm just going to hire this person who's my close friend. I'm not, I'm going to hire that person because that, so the, the women who had the, like the, that had these the voice, then they were really sharp and they were really like, a, like cursing in the space and saying, I'm, I'm done with this. And, and they were calling the other women out. So there were some women that were more vocal and more loud. Those were the most hired women, you know, there it, it's just, and it's a completely different orientation to go like I want that woman on my team because the women know that I want to be that woman also for someone else's team and for my team too it was it was just so incredibly natural there's no pressure no painting of a picture of what archaearchy could be we didn't even we, we didn't talk about how archaearchy goes like the image of how archaearchy goes they created it and this means that it's it's inside of women. It's already inside of them. We just need to pull out all of these um, survival strategies, all of the beliefs uh, that keep women putting all their energy into keeping modern culture. And if they, they move out, like they divest all of this energy from modern culture, boom, and naturally it starts, it starts happening. And and it doesn't mean that they don't need to go through processes, that they don't have a gremlin and that they don't have boxes. And, and hence the team, hence having teams of dangerous women that can go, hold on a second. This is just hating. What do you really want to do with your energy? Okay, well, hold on a second. This is, again, you putting yourself down. What do you really want to do? And... And, and I've seen the thing is that women for having this stand of holding space for archaearchy in the world, for themselves and for others, women, in, when they're in each other's teams, they need to be fierce. They really need to be straight, you know, no, it's like no pussyfooting around, no, like you see something, say something, because women can be in the mess women can be in the mess of saying it imperfectly and then the other person says it imperfectly but at at the end the space can hold the imperfectness and the kind of mixed communication so that the 
the jewel so that the the accurate clarity the the stand the love can come out i was another woman fiercely uh inviting like inviting for another another place of accountability because women want to be accountable really want to be accountable because it's it's just they're so over they're so over and done with choking themselves you know they already know that like they can choke themselves they can they can live small lives while dreaming about something big or something real and and they know they know what it's like they know it's like to sub subject themselves to the mediocrity that the men hold so that they get little crumbs so that they can relate a little bit and so for example i i there's this there's a group of women right now still in the ripple effects of of the women of earth lab that are exploring relating with men and relating with their sexuality and one of the, the, the topics that comes on and on and on over and over and over is I need to tear, take care of men. I have to caretake men. And we're, we're really going into that. Like, why do I have this belief that I have to do it? And so one of them is I have to do it. Otherwise, I will have no man to relate with. And then the question is, and so what, like, what is, you know, what, what do you, what, how is it not, not so what, as in like gremlin, like screw them. It's what happens in your heart, what happens in your soul, what happens in your stand. If you really realize that there are very few or no men that can take the stand that you want. That is not, I'm going to, I'm going to take care of them. Now, what other options are there? And so that's one of them. Another one is I, I need to take care of men. Otherwise they will kill themselves. They will hurt themselves. They will not, they will not be alive. They are so, um, they're such idiots. They're, they're children. They don't grow up and they're so hopeless. You know, this kind of, uh, you know, men are, they're, they're so smart, but you know, he's a hopeless, he doesn't know how to take care of himself. And and seeing, okay, how am I, how am I supporting this to happen? How am I enabling men to keep staying children? And what other things can we do? And then the third one that we've identified that is the pattern for most women is I need to take care of men, otherwise they will kill me. Otherwise they will turn into dangerous beasts go rogue and become assassins and you know all these uh, shootings and school shootings in the united states and these messages from these young men about women didn't give me the sex that they want this is how real it is it's not just a fantasy world um, and 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 how many women growing up generations and generations with this idea passed on from their mothers Men need a woman to soften their edges, you know, as if it is the woman's sacred role to make a, a beast human, to make a man a, a good man. And I think that's been so much the role of women in modern culture has been, I'm going to make sure that my man is a good man. And it, and it, I, and I, I just, I shocked myself. I had this such a, a realization because I've I've been one of these women and I was in this emotional healing process. And I at some point I saw, oh my God, it's instead of using all of my energy for creating new villages, new projects, like a, I could be using this energy to create a hundred projects in my life. I'm using all of this creation, all of this radiance for one project with a hundred problems. And it's like, 
And the only way that I could do it was to brand it as I'm, it's a sacred world of a woman to, to soften the edges. And, and, and I remember this, I remember growing up and other women growing up and, and having this, like the rougher the man, the more of a challenge it is to change him into a human being, to a, a man who can feel his heart. And, you know, this rebel without a cause, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to fix him, you know, this whole thing that the status, status and the value of woman would be to generate these, these good men in society. And, and I said, I'm done with this. I am done trying to find what is men's role in society, in my society. That's their job. And so there's these, these stands that are absolutely unfair and arrogant to say, I'm creating a society where the where I'm not taking care of men anymore. I'm creating a society where we're, we're taking care of, of, of the planet and where hierarchical, uh, hierarchical organizations do not have any value, where, where uh, consuming, res like we're looking at nature as resources has no value, where this idea that we can own houses has absolutely no value. And where trying to be someone has absolutely no value. And it's not my job to find, to find anyone's place in that culture, except what's my place in that culture. And the, the modern culture woman in me goes, but that's so mean, that's so unfair. And, and to realize, yes, it is an un fair culture that I'm creating, a culture of radical responsibility. It's above fairness. It is, I'm, I, I'm, if I want to see this culture exist, I need to take a, a huge amount, an unreasonable, an unfair amount of responsibility to guard this, to guard this culture. And for that, I need to divest completely the energy from the men and 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 to go you know what i'm sure that in 7 billion people on this planet you know more or less half of them being men i'm sure they're going to invent healing for themselves i'm sure they're going to find out some way to to have a role if they really want to be part of this new society and then and thus treating them like the potential of men and not as babies who cannot take care of themselves. And so I just wanted to say one more thing, which is when I realized that I was in this groups, all these groups with these other women, and they're kind of all in the same groups of each other. You know, we could have one group with seven different um, researches, but we are in seven different groups with one research each. That's when I realized, well, we should let's live together like well what are we doing let's go live together and so you know part of the even still the legend from a, a training that has happened two months ago is that the woman of earth bridge house is starting and i know that you know there's the dignity women's dignity rich house and so this is part of it women of earth bridge house is is going to start it's in brazil and it's already in a way it's already started you know it started in a seat in me and it started in a seat in other women i'm going to brazil today as soon as i arrive in brazil i meet another woman of earth we start the the bridge house starts two weeks later another woman comes in we are three two weeks later another woman will come in we are four and so it's really and the in that bridge house, it's it's about it's not it's not about finding who we are, it's about putting all this energy that we've been investing in modern culture, status, benefit, safety, and men, all of it in creating an, a next culture, creating our hierarchy. And what are the skills, what are the what are the muscles that we need to develop with each other and with 
everyone at large so that this can be created. So I'm super excited about that. I'm I'm beyond excited. <laughs> I'm like ecstatic about it. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I did not know about that. And it's uh it's only started three days ago yeah great that was fantastic and mm, i just had one more question maybe it's gone yes so you know this is i i so get it and how you know I get this that when women take a, take back their attention really to to create the the things to take responsibility for their own for their creation that comes through them and whatever that means you know not just material especially non-material creations of like a women of earth bridge house or whatever have you like, how does that ripple out to the rest of of the culture outside women when it's no longer about women creating it for men or women focusing only on their children but they're like this is like have you had any of this effect have you noticed any of this effect like the ripples of women taking this radical stand for their healing transformation and their creation well yes and it's bigger than women taking a stand for their healing and transformation they're taking a stand for archaearchy for their place in archaearchy for their role in creating archaearchy and so it's like even part of your question had a bit of look at what other people's roles is or what uh, what is their position and it's like it, it says nothing to do with that it's really about establishing like it's about training getting things out of the way all the baggage out of the way that is needed for the next step in training to to live archaearchy, to and to to establish, live, inhabit, embody archaearchy, and and in in doing it so, it carves this this place that Anne Chloe is doing amazingly. I don't know if she is kind of this 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 wedge, this wedge. There's this world of confusion and of can I do this? Is it really fair? Oh, no, we can't. This All this cannot do. There's no alternative. And she is a living wedge. This, this bigger than a stone in a shoe, because a stone in a shoe, it just brings attention. She brings a wedge and inserts in the middle of whatever it is and carves this space of distinction of this that I'm creating is archaearchy. That's it. And she does not ask permission. Oh, can I? No, it's like she's there wherever she is. This is where archaearchy is. And this is what is possible of women to become these wedges in their own way. These wedges of, I don't care. I'm taking this space because, because I am. And I'm no longer playing in that game of modern culture. And so this is, it's to train the muscles to be able to anywhere in the world, in the um, a grocery shop or a market or whatever, walking in the streets, by the lake, in the, in the, in the garden, it doesn't matter who's having more power or who's the space holder or if, even in a training, even in a training that any of these women can just go, doesn't matter who's the trainer, they, they can go and go, this is archaearchy. And, like, and I want to play here. Will you come to this area? And if you, if you don't, I'm going to find someone else who will. I'm going to find the other women who want this too. And it is incredible. And so it's not about, it's not really about, there's a kind of disregard for what other people want. This I'm going to do this. And if you want, well, I'm glad that you know this, you know, go find the thing that you really want to do. And it, there's a disregard for inclusion, but there's a, a fierce invitation by inspiration, by knowing that this is possible. I can create this culture and I can create this culture and I can create that, that it doesn't require a certain amount of permission or a certain amount of, um, I don't know, 
someone handing out authority to you. It's just, it doesn't, it, all it requires is these skills of creating no matter where you are. That is what the bridge house is about. And that's what women of earth lab is about is to, to train yourself to be, to be a, a wedge so that archaearchy can, can freely unfold and find the other women find the other women because they are hidden they're camouflaged they're camouflaged in modern culture who are trying to be the edge but hiding or or pretending that they're not being a wedge and 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 bring them bring them in it's like look it's possible to do this you can do this you don't have to pretend that you're not and the more that the more women that we are the 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 stronger it gets the real stronger that it gets so that's 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 what we're doing in the bridge house that's what we're doing in the lab and that's what I'll be doing for the rest of my life mm -hmm. yes basically. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. have you got another women of earth lab planned yet yes it's planned for 16th to the 20th of March 2024 in Brazil near Sao Paulo and so registrations are open and and there's going to be a bridge house before then there's going to be an expand the box training in the week just before the women's lab and so our our idea is to have a women of earth bridge house up to the up to the lab and then have a women of earth after the lab to continue to work and integrate and the the new knowledge the new the new discoveries the new stands and so that each woman of earth can create these spaces these women of earth trainings this women of earth workshops this women of earth seed kits you know like just like seed kit trainings so that more women of earth can can go like i'm one of them like yes i want to go i want to go train this with other women that's 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 what turns me on Okay. Thank you for letting me know. I'm going to, yeah, I, I, I want to be there. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have cool. three months and something. So totally yes. Nice. Come. Yes. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, Vera. My pleasure. Anytime you want to get me to talk about Women of Earth Lab, I, I will not stop talking. So. All right. <laughs>